which is demonstrating that uh, climate change is, uh, is proceeding and, uh, and, 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 and things haven't been improving according to the uh, Paris Agreement. So we haven't seen any indications of improvement in the, in the real status of atmosphere when it comes to implementation of the Paris uh, Agreement. And I will show you some, some slides here. So first of all, uh, we have uh, seen so far 1.1 uh, degrees uh, warming of the, of, of the planet, and the past five years have been the warmest uh, years on, on record since 1850, when, when, we, uh, had, uh, when we established a global network of uh, stations, and, uh, and also the last uh, 10 years have been the warmest period uh, during this uh, 100 and, uh, uh, 170 years uh, period. So far, the warmest year was 2016, when we had a very strong El Nino, which was boosting the warming. But if you look at this graph, you can see that the warming still continues, and, and uh, that's not, there's no indication of phase out of the warming. And, and the next slide shows what we have observed in greenhouse gases. Here we have three main greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, uh, methane, and uh, nitrous oxide, and in all of those we have, again, broken records. And, and the carbon dioxide concentration is uh, highest in 3 million years, and uh, 3 million years we had uh, uh, 2 to 4 degrees warmer planet than today, and the sea level was uh, between 10 and 20 meters higher than, than today. So these numbers are already, especially this greenhouse uh, carbon dioxide concentration uh, number is uh, somewhat alarming. This 400 ppm was regarded as a, as a, as a critical level, and uh, we were exceeding that level already three years uh, ago. In methane, which is the second most important uh, greenhouse gas, uh, uh, we have also broken records, and, uh, and, and methane has contributed about 17 percent of the warming, whereas carbon dioxide has contributed two-thirds of the warming. And, and out of those, uh, clearly, carbon dioxide is the most important, uh, and its lifetime in atmosphere is, is very long. If we uh, let, let the carbon dioxide concentration to, uh, be high, uh, the problem doesn't disappear in the coming decades, so even not, not, not during the coming, coming centuries. And the third greenhouse gas is uh, nitrous oxide, and it's very, coming from, very, very much coming from the from, from the farmlands, and, and there we have also broken records. And when it comes to uh, concentration increase uh, um, uh, in N2O, uh, we were having, having the highest increase, annual increase uh, during the period uh, since the early, early 80s. And the next slide shows uh, uh, temperature anomalies. We have, have, here we have compared uh, 81 to 20, uh, 2010 uh, period with, uh, with the uh, observations for this, uh, this year. And you can again see that the Arctic has been the area where the, where the warming is, has been strongest and the anomalies have been strongest. Uh, but there has been also a cold anomaly uh, hitting North America. And, uh, and we, have, uh, we, we know that the changes in the Arctic, uh, they are also having impacts on weather patterns outside of the Arctic area. And uh, some of the uh, cold and also some of the warm anomalies uh, outside of the Arctic, they are, they are related to changes in the atmospheric uh, dynamics, which, which is related to the warming of the, of the, of, of the Arctic. And, and there have been also fairly high temperatures uh, observed in southern part of uh, Africa. And, and this slide shows uh, what's happening in the oceans, and, and the oceans have been uh, we have stored more than 90 percent of the excess heat uh, to the oceans, and, uh, and ocean warming is uh, taking place, and, uh, and, uh, and, and we have seen about half degree warming of the, of, of the seawater. Here we have a graph for the, for the 700 meters uh, deep, uh, deep sea, and it's the same story from, from the surface to the, to the depth of the oceans. And, uh, and, 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 and this uh, warming of the seawater has uh, contributed to the sea level rise, and uh, there has been also a boost in melting of uh, main glaciers worldwide, especially Greenland uh, melting has been uh, almost tripled during the past, uh, past 10 years, and uh, we have also start, started seeing 
melting of the Antarctic uh, glaciers, and, and they are going to be the long-term drivers of this. And if you look at the average that we have uh, been observing during the uh, past century, it has been one to two millimeters per year, whereas uh, now we are experiencing three to four mil millimeters per year. So there has been a boost in the sea level, sea level rise. And, uh, and, and that has uh, led to sea level rise, and, and it's not uniform worldwide. Uh, uh, what is happening in, in, in Greenland, for example, it has an impact on, on the southern hemisphere, and what's happening at Antarctica has an impact in northern hemisphere. And then we have also these ocean currents, and, and that's why we have some areas where the sea level rise has been more than average. And for example, the Pacific island states have been facing higher numbers than the global average, and which is of course very alarming for them because they are, they are low-lying and they are the most vulnerable countries uh, worldwide. And, uh, this, and, and then we have uh, melted uh, Arctic uh, sea ice. We have melted already 75 percent of the sea ice uh, mass from the Arctic and, 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 um, and, and the coverage of the sea ice in the Arctic. Uh, we have seen uh, it, uh, the, the loss uh, both in springtime and, and also in the autumn time. We have year-to-year -year variability, but the trend, trend is very, very clear here. And, um, and since oceans are serving as a sink of uh, carbon dioxide, uh, we are at the same time changing the chemical composition of the, of the seawater. And uh, here we have some records from Hawaii from the late uh, 80s uh, de demonstrating that, uh, that uh, the seawater is getting more acid. And, uh, and, and that's, that has an impact on the sea ecosystems. And, um, and, uh, and, and there's an estimation that uh, the, the PAS is lowest already in 25 million years. And then a few words about extreme events and records that we have broken uh, in, in different parts of the world uh, last year. First, we have seen heat waves uh, hitting several parts of the world. And, uh, and, and for example, last uh, June and July, we were having record-breaking temperatures uh, hitting several Central European countries, uh, which are listed here. Uh, and also Australia has been uh, facing records, which, has, uh, which have been also leading to drought and uh, forest fires, uh, for example, in Sydney area. And, uh, and, and, and also India has been face, facing unusual uh, events, uh, which, which are related to the three monsoon heat wave. And, uh, and also there are other, other reasons. Uh, I will show you soon something what has happened uh, in the Arctic Circle area. We have also seen marine heat waves, and uh, we have seen about 40 percent of the heat waves. They have been categorized as strong ones, and about one third have been categorized as, uh, as, as, as moderate. So this warming of the oceans is also contributing to ocean, ocean heat waves. And uh, perhaps the biggest impacts uh, that we have seen uh, as related to climate change, they are felt uh, through changes in precipitation patterns. And uh, last year, or this year, we have seen uh, drought hitting many parts of the world. Uh, this heat wave in Europe uh, led to drought uh, in the same area where we observed very high temperatures. Uh, we have seen also drought uh, hitting southern Africa. And then also Australia, Indonesia area has faced uh, drought. Uh, so is the case in, in uh, Central America. And, uh, and also in the Arctic, and in the Arctic, uh, those events are also uh, boosting the forest fires that uh, are causing uh, carbon dioxide emissions to the atmosphere. Then we have seen uh, tropical cyclones. Uh, we saw Idai, which was uh, the first uh, such strong uh, uh, one hitting uh, uh, southern hemisphere in 100 years. And, uh, and, and, uh, and there, was, there were plenty of damage. And uh, in developing countries like Mozambique, uh, the means to evacuate a large amount of people, they are very different from uh, USA, where the evacuation is, uh, is much easier operation. 
we had Hurricane Dorian hitting uh, Bahamas, uh, and, and they were when Bahamas lost 25% uh, of its uh, annual G uh, GDP. There was uh, record-breaking typhoon hitting Japan, which I was also personally experiencing while being in, in Tokyo, and they, they broke all-time uh, rainfall records as related to that, and, and there were severe damage and, uh, and, uh, and uh, about 100 casualties related to that. And, and there are a couple of others that are listed here as well. Wildfires, I already mentioned uh, that they were severe. There has been a still ongoing severe uh, event in Australia, and, um, and, and, and fire season was also very active in South America. And of course, we are very much concerned of the, of the uh, rainforest ecosystems uh, of Amazonas, uh, which is a major carbon storage uh, worldwide. And, and these wildfires, they are also contributing to the uh, carbon dioxide uh, emissions. And, and, and this year, we had uh, severe forest fires in eastern Siberia, which were related to this route that I was uh, just explaining. And, uh, and, and that's why we have seen record-breaking emissions of carbon dioxide from those fires. Last year, it was the case. Uh, a similar case in, in Canada, where we got the, the amount of uh, the annual uh, carbon dioxide emissions of Canada released uh, by, the, by the forest fire. And there were also some, some severe forest fires in Scandinavia. So this is, uh, this is a new feature. And heat waves, uh, we have started seeing a growing amount of heat waves because of this uh, general temperature. Uh, increase and here we have some numbers from from World Health Organization demonstrating that, that there's a growing trend and um, and, and, and then besides uh, the temperature challenges we have also air quality challenges maturity of the planet uh, is uh, the population they are, they are breathing air which is not uh, meeting the health uh, standards and, and that's a growing uh, problem in especially in many urban areas and there were also vector-borne diseases like dengue fever, uh, which was uh, where we had a million cases in different parts of the, of the world. And uh, then we are working together with uh, FAO, and uh, FAO has estimated that, uh, that we, have, uh, we have started seeing growing amount of uh, hunger worldwide. There has been a slight increase. Uh, there was a declining trend uh, until 2014, but since then we have seen a slight uh, increase, which is not uh, good news uh, when it comes to food security. And in, in the long run, this, this may be the major challenge related to climate, climate change. So with these words, uh, thanks for coming, and, uh, and, uh, and if you have any, any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Um, and we're honored, before we pass to the questions, we're honored to have been joined on the podium by uh, Chile's Minister for Science, Technology, and Knowledge and Innovation, Andres Cuvé. Um, so I'd give the floor to him to say a few words, and then we'll pass to questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Peter. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here today. Uh, I just want to mention that um, the scientific report that we are listening today, I think represents a, a new kind of scientific report in which uh, thoroughness, collaborative and systematic methodology produces up-to-date and compelling evidence. And I think this constitutes a remarkable demonstration of a new type of global organization of the scientific community. A type of organization which in addition bases the process of an, on an active interaction with government representatives and policymakers. Uh, and I think today, uh, scientists and policymakers understand and communicate overwhelming scientific evidence in single agreed report, which constitutes a novel um, and, and remarkable feature uh, in the relationship between science and society. We have the evidence, we have the compelling evidence. This evidence is now gathered in a way which um, allows hundreds, thousands of studies to be uh, brought together, to be discussed, to be um, 
also uh, discussed with policymakers, and now it's the role of other institutions like a Ministry of Science to bring that evidence into public policy, which is, I think, the greatest challenge we have now. So congratulations on the report. Okay, so um, if you could introduce yourself, please, with name and media affiliation. Um, just to uh, add, uh, Professor Tallis is joined by Max Dilley, who's our Director of Climate Prediction and Adaptation, and by Omar Badur, um, who's the Scientific Coordinator of this report. Thank you. Um, yes. <laughs> Georg Ehring, German Radio, Deutschlandfunk. Uh, temperature depends also on uh, El Nino and La Nina. Could you comment on that situation, please? Thank you. Yes, so, so, so we have this uh, El Nino, La Nina variability, which is uh, very much related to the, the variations of uh, temperature over the Pacific Ocean. And, um, and, and, uh, and last year was uh, a year without any, any major impact and, um, and, and we have seen the temperature increase continued. But uh, in 2016 we had very strong El Nino and that's why 2016 has been the warmest uh, year on, on record uh, so far. So without El Nino we would have seen this kind of linear uh, growth of uh, temperature but there was this boost in 2016. Uh, Susumu Kojima from NHK, uh, Japanese public broadcaster. Uh, two questions, if I may. First, uh, can you tell us what was the global mean temperature for this year from January to October? And secondly, um, can you tell us, us the impacts of climate change on the floods and the heat waves in terms of occurrences? I mean, can you say uh, once in a century events uh, taking place more often? Yes, so, so we have seen uh, 1.1 degree warming uh, worldwide so far since, uh, since the uh, uh, 19th century. So that's the, that's the exact number and, uh, and we have seen increase, increase in the amount of uh, weather related uh, disasters and, uh, and, and we have seen increase in the amount of uh, flooding events uh, we have seen an increase in the amount of storms and uh, also increase in the amount of uh, heat waves and, uh, and, and also drought events. And, and the dominant ones, uh, when it comes to numbers, uh, they are storms and, uh, and, and flooding, flooding events. Uh, there's a gentleman on the front row there. Uh, Joanne Tabasa from Telegram Newspaper India. Uh, two quick questions. First is that uh, from the eastern part of India and Bangladesh is supposed to have one of the highest sea level rises, uh, is about eight millimeter per year. Uh, can you qualify it in context of the global areas which, which are having higher sea level rises? That's number one. And number two, already we have seen that UNEP report uh, saying that we need to uh, kind of treble, uh, at least treble the NDCs to reach a two degree limit if we want to reach two degree at least. Uh, and, but this report and the UNEP report are clearly showing the need to kind of increase the ambition. Do you think these reports will have any impact on the negotiation in the current COP? So, so, so the science community has been producing this kind of reports uh, for, for, for already several decades. We have seen IPCC reports and, and WMO has been publishing this annual state of the climate uh, reports and, uh, and, and, and they are, of course, uh, as we heard from Minister Kuwe, science has been very much the driver of, uh, of uh, be, driver behind Paris Agreement besides the fact that we have started seeing the impacts of uh, climate change. So without impacts, uh, it would have been more theoretical. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, and all these findings that we have now is indicating that we are more moving towards three to five degrees warming by the end of this century and, uh, and the Paris pledges that countries uh, uh, indicated uh, some years ago, they would mean about three degrees warming. And uh, if we would like to reach uh, uh, two degrees, uh, we should uh, bend this emission growth curve in the coming 15 years and, and become carbon neutral by 20, 
70, and if we would like to reach uh, 1.5 degrees, uh, we should bend this emission uh, growth curve in five years and uh, become carbon neutral by 2050. And so at, at the moment, uh, countries haven't been following the Paris pledges, which uh, so this uh, at the moment uh, we are not towards uh, not, not uh, uh, heading towards uh, even three degrees uh, warming. The numbers uh, would be higher if uh, if we would uh, continue our current uh, way of uh, behaving. And here on the map you can see see the see, see the numbers of, uh, of of sea level rise, and you can see that there are certain certain areas where the numbers are higher than the global average, which is which are indicated with the red. Uh, red color here and uh, perhaps we don't have time to go to the details here but uh, but this material is available for for you and you can you can look at it uh, more in detail and minister Kuve would like to add a few words i just want to add to your to your question um the the scientific community for example in chile organizing the cop 25 uh participated in the definition of our current ndc uh, and those NDCs now contain some concepts like carbon budget, like peak emissions. They are directly, uh, they were directly uh, assessed and consulted with the scientific community. Uh, we have committed to carbon neutrality by 2050, to replacement of coal energy by 2040, and we are leading an alliance of uh, carbon neutrality by 2050, which contains today more than 60 countries. So I think to your answer, the, the, the question is yes, the scientific community can have uh, an impact, can make a difference. Uh, and I think these events like COP25 are the uh, places where the scientific community can participate in public policy with very concrete results. Thank you. A gentleman on the third row there, yes. And... Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like uh, to know if you have the new index for heat wave uh, to combine uh, humidity and another parameter. So could you just repeat the question a little bit louder? Uh, the new index uh, for heat wave uh, to combine uh, uh, humidity and or another parameter. Okay, so, the, so how hot do you feel? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Dr. Bedou, would you like to answer that? Um, yeah, uh, the, the question, if I understand well, it's uh, is there an index that combines the heat and um, people? Uh, humidity, yes. Uh, this is actually um, part of the um, analysis that we have from the World Health Organization. And the uh, condensed all the information in terms of uh, triggering some uh, uh, diseases. And this, for example, for the dengue um, fever that uh, Secretary General showed uh, uh, a map, it's actually uh, linked to uh, parameters like temperature and humidity. So in the report, we do, we do not provide exact uh, relationship, but the analysis is based implicitly on these kind of parameters. If I could just add something on that, um, at the country level, uh, several years ago, WMO and the World Health Organization published a guideline on heat wave and human health early warning systems. And that guideline, which is available on the web, has a whole list of different indices that can be and are being used for uh, supporting heat health early warning systems in different countries around the world. And they incorporate a number of these different parameters. Um, David Shukman, I'm told. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> Hi, thank you. David Shukman, BBC. Just to clarify one thing, you say it's, you're almost certain that um, the last 10 years have been the hottest decade on record. I mean, does almost certain mean you're not quite sure or that you can't be sure yet because the decade hasn't quite finished? It's the, it's the latter. And then secondly, obviously, and you referred to this, you've produced reports like this time after time emissions keep going up, is anybody listening? Uh, so first of all, of course, uh, when we talk about climate for this year, we still have uh, uh, less than one month time to, to, to finalize the year. And, uh, 
and same is true for the for, for, for the decade. But of course, we know know already that this one month doesn't change the big picture. So that's why we have to say that it's tentative. But we will have the final numbers once uh, after after a few weeks. Uh, but uh, but for sure, it's it's going to be the warmest. Uh, the atmosphere doesn't behave in such a way that we would have very cold anomaly, which would change the picture total in, in, in four weeks. And, um, and uh, is there, has this message been heard? I, I, I would say that the message has been heard, uh, and, um, and, and there are several countries, uh, especially European countries, who are planning to have very ambitious uh, programs, and, and there are individual countries uh, which are already having fairly ambitious programs worldwide, uh, Chile as, uh, as one, one example. And then we have also started seeing growing uh, interest of the private sector to, to offer climate-friendly solutions, and uh, there's growing amount of uh, renewable energy used uh, in, in many parts of the world. And uh, if you look at the car industry, it's growing amount of uh, electric vehicles and the biofuel vehicles that are coming into, into the market. So the, the, the world is moving and, and, and this problem is, uh, is understood, but so far the ambition level hasn't been high enough to, to reach the Paris uh, targets. But uh, there's no reason to be totally pessimistic that, uh, that uh, nothing is, is happening. I think that things are happening, but uh, so far the ambition level hasn't been high enough. Uh, Minister Kuve, and then we have time just for one last question, uh, gentlemen. Yeah, just in the, in the topic of if is there anyone listening? I, I, I think I think we are listening. Uh, the example that I just gave is a, is a clear example that we are listening. Our NDCs were constructed with the uh, evidence from the scientific community. The Alliance for 2050 has more than 60 countries today. I want to insist on that, and. Uh, there's a lot more to do. It's not only countries that need to listen. We also need to involve the private sector. Um, we also need to involve the civil community. And so uh, I think there are people listening. There's a lot more to do. And we have to increase the scope of the potential listeners uh, to not just nations and countries, but other actors as well. Okay, one last question. Uh, just there on the... Uh yeah, that gentleman. Hi, uh, Pera Bosch from TV3 in, in Barcelona. A uh, couple of questions. First, if you could say which, which is the exact figure for temperature rise since the 19th century. And secondly, in terms of precipitation and floodings, what have you observed in the Western Mediterranean area, which was one of the areas that you highlighted in your report uh, with uh, big floods uh, the last few months in Spain? So the exact the warming number so far is 1.1 degrees, and uh, and over the continents we have seen higher numbers, and in the Arctic we have seen uh, of the order of 2.5 degrees uh, warming so far, and over the oceans we have seen uh, ocean temperatures have been rising by half uh, half degree the the, the sea, sea water mass, and in in, in, in general we have seen. Uh, this was uh, these drought uh, issues and uh, flooding events that I was showing. It was uh, only for this year, but uh, the long long term trend is such that uh, we have seen uh, drought becoming more prevailing in Africa, in southern part of Asia, and uh, in some parts of uh, both North America and uh, South uh, South America. And, and they have already had an impact on the. On the economies of the countries, uh, we, we published the status of climate report together with IMF uh, uh, a year ago, where we demonstrated that uh, the whole southern hemisphere has already suffered because of uh, climate change. Uh, there has been a negative impact on their economies, and uh, and only the high northern latitudes have uh, gained from this uh, this change, uh, which is uh, related to higher temperatures and uh, and more precipitation. Thank you. Uh, I think, uh, unfortunately, our time's up. Um, uh, Professor Tallis and the Minister Kuve now have to go to Earth Information Day. Um, if there are follow-up in inquiries, uh, Dr. Dilly and Dr. Bador can, can help in French, Spanish, and English. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.
Yeah, okay, okay. But that's, that's the point. Yeah, yeah, we'll take them outside, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, wait, we'll, we, we need to go, but I'll speak to you outside. Uh, yeah.